Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is installing ITX Design Studio on Microsoft Windows. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. While it may seem real simple, installing the IBM Transformation Extender Design Studio can come with a couple of gotchas. In today's high security user endpoints, desktop and laptop PCs, getting a successful and usable Design Studio installation is easy if you follow a few simple steps. Prepare your installation directory, full control for all users. Start the process from a known good shell I recommend either Command Prompt or PowerShell that has Administrator Authority. And my final tip, disable overly protective antivirus software if necessary. Here we have a brand new Windows 10 installation where as you can see in the IBM directory I do not have any Transformation Extender versions installed at all. Over here in the downloads, we have the downloaded package for 10.1.2. And if we go back to the C drive and bring up the properties for the IBM directory, the first change I'm going to make is in the security tab. I'm going to click the advanced button. And I'm going to click the disable inheritance button. Now I'm going to copy all of these permissions to be as they were. And then I'm going to edit this one permission here, users, to give them full control. And OK and OK. Now that the IBM directory has full control for all users, this should make the process go much smoother. The next step is to open a command prompt as administrator. I shall kick off the installation from this command prompt to ensure that all sub-processes also have administrative permissions. Here is the directory where the download was. I'm going to kick it off now. And I'm going to run through the boxes of the setup wizard. Here we click next. On this screen we click next again. We agree to the license with yes. On the next step I'm going to fill in a company name. I'm going to leave the folder as is, but you can obviously change the name of that if you want to. I say yes to create the directory. Here is why I change from the default. I'm not going to install the typical installation. I'm going to go for custom, and on the next screen, I'm going to make sure everything is ticked, which it is by default. If you go with typical, you will not get the example files, which are quite useful. So I'm going to go with next and check the final settings before we go. The directory looks good, and next. Okay, that's completed with no error messages, so we'll untick view readme file, because we don't want to see that, and click finish. Over in our Windows Explorer, before we start any of the products, I'm going to check the content of a file called install.properties. Here we're checking that the install dir variable has been filled out in the file, and for me it has, so this is all looking good. Now I'm going to start the Design Studio one time from this administrator window, and then it should work fine for standard users from that point onwards. I'm going to choose the default workspace and set it as the default. Now the Windows Defender Firewall has tell me that some of these features are being blocked, so I'm going to allow access on private networks. And the Design Studio seems to have started up successfully. I'm going to close the Welcome tab and then we have our standard Design Studio with Extender Navigator at the top left ready to create our first project. 
Okay, so what are the, some of the things that we need to do if things go wrong? Let's fire up the registry editor and I'll show you four locations where there are registry keys that you will need to delete if you have a failed installation before you try installing again. So I'm going to start with H key current user. I'm going to drill down to software and then within software there's the IBM key and under IBM we have a transformation extender item. I recommend this key is completely removed if you have a failed installation assuming you have no other active installations and then try to install it again. If you have other installations drill down one more level and delete the key for the failed installation instead. Moving on to WOW6432 node I recommend you check in here to see if there's an IBM entry because you sometimes will find an IBM entry in here as well. Let's collapse H key current user and move on to H key local machine. Drill down through software and again IBM. We're looking for transformation extender. If this is the only installation and it has gone wrong, delete this entire key. If you've got other installations, find the version that actually failed to install and delete that key instead. Once more, here we're going into WOW 6432 node to check for an IBM subfolder and it doesn't exist at the moment. So that's what to do if things go wrong. Be careful with the Windows Registry Editor. You can break your machine if you delete the wrong thing. To delete a key, you right click and choose Delete. There will be a prompt, are you sure? Only click yes if you're absolutely sure. Please do a backup of the keys before you delete them. To do a backup, right click a key and choose Export. You get to choose the name of the file. I'm going to stick one on the desktop and call this BACKUP2.REG. If I now delete this key and click yes and then oh dear I really wanted that key I can just double click on this reg file, confirm the prompt, click yes and then the key is back again. So we've checked that the Extender Studio starts one time as an administrative user. The final job to do is check that it starts one time as a standard user. So I'm going to use the Start menu, go down to the IBM Transformation Extender folder here and fire up Design Studio the standard way. And it starts perfectly. So there we have it. My tips for installing IBM Transformation Extender Design Studio on a Windows platform with the least amount of issues. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button, perhaps leave a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.